Hey y'all, just a quick update. We had some difficulties in the beginning. The video pretty much just jumped straight into her introduction. So I just want to give you a heads up. Um, I had to cut the front part in, but we did save her introduction. My name is Hillary. I was born and raised in Greenville, Texas, and I migrated to Dallas when I was like what, 13. Um, I went to high school out here, graduated. I am now a mother of two children with a business, and I am currently in school studying criminal law and justice. Okay, and should she talk about her high school? We are from Speed Speeders, okay? Speeder Nation. Speeder Nation from Iraq. We from Iraq. <laughs> Me, Iraq, yeah. We both went to high school together, so I just thought about her. I made her a shirt like two years ago. I gotta give you a shirt before you leave. She has her own business. She's two two kids in. You know, I'm just one, so I feel like it's a perfect person to talk to you about balancing your work life and having businesses. And she got a lot of stuff going on, and she got a book. Okay, so we're definitely gonna get into it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, y'all. The camera gun turned off. I'm telling you, that was busy today. Okay. So what we was talking about was her juggling and being a mom, and her also doing her school, like her cosmetology school, the troubles with that, her getting back and forth to school, and then we start going into that with her job and how that's that's been kind of like shaping and molding you on how to juggle working, school, being a mom, all these things at one time. Extra, extra and the extra curriculum. And the extra curriculum. Yeah. So I want to kind of go back to your faith with God. This is something that a lot of people want to talk about, and I'm glad that you are here because you're the perfect person to talk about that, especially with our podcast that I've been listening to. I'm going to put that in. It's like your, I don't know, let me see, your solitude. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm to, got to. definitely my book. Can you talk more about that? So, um, I've always known God. As a kid, my grandmother, like, you know, introduced the name of Jesus Christ to us. Like, you know, still read from the Bible. Like, my grandmother introduced me to God and Jesus Christ. Right. At a young age, I knew I was different. I couldn't understand why. I used to pray. Like, we didn't live in a new place. I'd go to the window in the middle at nighttime and just pray. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was praying. When I was 15, um, my dad passed away, and I was just like, okay, now the only way for me to have a connection with him is, like, you know, a spiritual connection. So... I'm like, okay, now I need to get closer to God because like I don't I don't have anybody that I can run to. I don't have like that outlet to save me. Mm -hmm. So like as time went on, like you know, I kinda got closer to God. Like I can remember being 16, praying about our relationship with my mom and right. my sisters because anybody that knows us, like it was very toxic, like right, right. very toxic. So like you know, I pray that I um what really drew me closer to God, I don't really talk about this, but like, you know, lately God has told me stop running from it and like open up because like that's your story. So, um, if you feel comfortable, you feel comfortable. yeah, like I, I, I mean, it is, let me just talk about it. Because yeah. Because this is how I got close to God. In 2018, I got put in a situation where I almost lost my life. Mm -hmm. That entire night, I kept hearing God talking to me, but I was being disobedient and everything God said to me. I did the opposite. I'm saying it out loud though. Right. So if people around me can hear what he's saying to me, and like, I ain't know anybody that knows me, I'm not no scary person. Like, right. I'm gonna stay in my ground. Mm -hmm. But like, I felt like I was sounding scary. So I literally was hearing what God was saying, but to not look scary, doing the opposite right. of what he was saying to me. Um, my friend lost his life that night. A bullet that should have went to the back of my head missed me mm -hmm. by the grace of God. I said a prayer that night. Only one person said amen to my prayer. Mm -hmm. Me, right. me, and a bullet that should have went through the back of my head missed me by the grace of God, mm -hmm. and I'm still here. I got two bullets in one night. I'm not in jail, and I'm not dead, and I had children, and I get to, like, you know, see my children be born, like, not be born. I get to see my children grow up, right. and, like, that really changed me. That whole year, mm -hmm. I spent myself, I spent that year destroying myself, like, Drinking, like I mean, if we drink and I got a bottle of whiskey, I'm gonna give you some in the cup, but I'm gonna drink it out the bottle. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna that's that. That's that when you going through your trauma. <laughs> yeah, trauma like I was smoking like crazy. Like, um, I used to get drunk. I tried to walk in traffic one time. Like, got drunk in traffic. Like, go walk in. My brother came. He found me. Like, made me get in the car with him. I took a handful of pills that year. Didn't tell anybody that I did it. Like, literally was just messed up trying to recuperate for like days. And I just told myself, like, oh, you stupid. Yeah. You're still here. Like, you did that stupid stuff to yourself. Yeah, there's a purpose for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. for what? Um, 
I'll never forget the day God said, like, listen, this is it. What you gonna do with this? Like, it, this is it. Like, one day, like, I had been working. Like, I couldn't keep a job because I was emotionally unstable. Like, I would be at work stocking and then just be on the house crying. Or I end up in the stock room, like, crying. And so, like, one day I was on the bus and you guys, please excuse my son. Go back over here. Yes, y'all. We have the kids here. My baby is asleep. Her two boys are here. So, like I told y'all, it's going to be a raw and uncut over here. Hey, baby. This is what's really going on. We still rolling. We still rolling. That's it. It's been still rolling. You're supposed to be the cameraman. All right, We still rolling? Yep. Oh. So, with your faith and those things that had happened to you, I'm so sorry that happened. I didn't tell anybody about it. That year, I really just shut myself off from it because I didn't trust nobody. I really right. felt like everybody was asking, yeah, like, terrible, yeah, I wouldn't leave out of my house. Like, I honestly was just terrified of people during that time frame. But one day, like, I was. I was getting tanned, so in order to continue to receive tanned, I had to do community service or like, you know, I had to find a job. Well, I couldn't, like my assignment ended up in one job and honestly, job cut, I couldn't keep them. Right. Because I was You're so mentally, yeah. Yeah, like I, I just wasn't ready. So one day I was still with us and I'm looking up and I heard a guy say, you know, I'm about to come with you. So like, when I started looking at what hunger means, I was like, hey, are you going to have dinner at me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm literally, I'm sitting at the back of the bus, there's only three people on the bus. The bus driver, another man, and myself. Mm -hmm. And like the bus driver, like I could see him looking at me from the mirror, mm -hmm. and he knew that I was going to ask him something. But I'm sitting back there, and I'm really weighing in on what God is saying, and I'm actually angry, like sitting at the back of the bus. And I'm just like, no, you're not going to do that. Like, this is not what humbling means. Like, I know what that means. I'm humble. Like, I will never forget where I came from. And like, you know, but. That's not what God was trying to teach me. Uh, he was just basically letting me know that he was going to hold me. So I, I, honestly, I was getting upset about this. No, you're not. You're not about to humiliate me, like, but humility before the honor is real. And that literally, that's what he did. Um, my first like fast food job was like McDonald's, and then I worked at a Taco Bell. And after that, I told myself I would never work at fast food again. After that day on the bus, God was like, how bad do you want it? Like, I just said, okay, well, I want it bad. He said, okay, well, I want you to apply this water burger. So I applied to work at the water burger. Listen to me. I'm working with the city of Dallas. I work with children. I got to a fight with my sister when I was 17 and she was 14. Mm -hmm. I didn't start school off with everybody in my senior high school. I had a third degree failure, but they not allow me to start school every right. time. Now, I told you I worked with the city of Dallas since then. Mm -hmm. They were a background check. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know and I don't apply to this word. The, the man at the time told me, he said, listen, I don't care what's on this application. I just need you to get up and walk to the trash can. I'm going to hire you to work. I just want to see you walk there and walk back. Like, harassing me in a sexual manner. And I was just like, you know what? I need a job. So I'm about to say, hey, this man is calling me at like 2 o'clock in the morning. He ain't, gave, ain't called me and told me when I started shift. You called me at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. You let me know, like, oh, you're going to work on my shift. I know where all the blind spots is. I'm thinking to myself. It's you know, subordination. Why? I, I filed a complaint on him. Right. To the girl. They never called me back. But you know what? God would, did not want me to have that job. Right. He just wanted to see if I was going to apply there. Mm -hmm. They wanted to pay me $9,000. At the time, like, hey, that was like okay money. I'm living with someone. But that was like, no, I got some bills for you. I just said you were going to apply to the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gave me a job where, you know, I started making $13 an hour. And I was like, okay. Um, And this is that same year. Right. That I'm going through all of that. But like one day I just woke up and I was just like, I'm tired. I'm screaming like at the top of my lungs. And I'm like, I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of waking up feeling like this. I'm ready for a change. When yeah. is the change going to come? And that's when he, we had the conversation on the bus. And he said, it starts today. It starts now. What are you going to do with it? So I tried to go to her thing. That didn't work out. I went and got a job working at a call center. Um, at the beginning of 2019, they did, they did, on this day in 2019, they did a big layoff. A lot of 500 people, and I was one of the people who got laid off. I received child care, and I asked myself, I said, my child care is in April, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yes, yeah, like, what am I going to do? So, I'm sitting here, I went, like, to, like, job review, job job well, when I went to UC Southwestern to be a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. This man, Mr. Carroll, I will never forget this man, sat down, interviewed me, and he said, why do you want to work here? I said, I got kids. I need a job. I said, I'm hiring I said, you're not going to hire me. Why? He said, you better than this. Mm -hmm. You are better than this. And like it, it upset me, but I was like, you know what? 
that man seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. Yeah. So I went home and I went back to the drawing board and I said, okay, I can keep searching for jobs. And this is now we're going on in February. I said, I can keep searching for jobs and keep getting turned down and I lose my child care. And then as soon as I lose my child care, somebody's going to hire me and I'm not going to have child care. I said, or well, I can go to school. And in two and a half, three months, I could have gained two and a half, three months worth of knowledge right. and have gotten somewhere. So I made the decision to go to cosmetology school. And honestly, like, I'm glad I did. Like, God literally just started building me. But when I said yes, many are called, few are chosen because not everybody answers the call. But when I actually answered, he really, my life started taking off. My first time ever getting a car was in 2019. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, the lit, my Uber driver. Like watch me get frustrated. Like was watching me so frustrated trying to get somewhere in life. And this man didn't know me from a can of paint. He just watched me break down, took me to where the car was, lied to the man who sold me my car, was like, listen, this is my neighbor. We trying to help him get it. That man didn't know me. God, I had a nice car. Now the car may have been two different colors, but it had eighty seven thousand miles on it, and it got me from point A to point B. Didn't nobody teach me how to drive. I got in that car. And started driving myself to and from. <laughs> started driving myself because my mom stopped taking me to the bus stop. Like she didn't give me a chance right. to like, you know. Well, yeah, you didn't have that support. To, yeah, so I just had to jump out there. And that, like, even just telling that story made me laugh because like, I got into a girl like doing road rage. She was like, "You don't know how to drive." I was like, "It makes me laugh when people tell me I don't know how to drive." Yeah. You're right. I, I know, know, but I'm lucky. Like, <laughs> didn't nobody <laughs> teach me how to drive? I didn't yeah. go to driving school. Right. I got in the car. I got my wheel. Taught myself, never drove on the highways. Um, me and my children's dad got into it one day. I'm like, took, we were taking my son to a neurologist appointment. We got into it and he left me straight out in the wood. And the only way for me to get back home was to get on the highway. So, oh, wow. And it was raining that day. So I was like, Yeah, that's, that's tough. I mean, I prayed about it and I got right. myself back yeah. home. Yeah. So that's how I learned how to drive. I was taking myself to and from. Like, going to school itself was like, you know, Hard, like I don't know why people don't like me when they need me. Like I think they think my happiness is fake, but when you see me happy, yeah, that's genuine. Yeah, I feel like now since we kind of matured and we don't get into things in life, but I feel like when maturity comes, you know, uh, let me see, like obstacles and challenges. Yeah. Like you can go, you can choose this way or you can choose that. Yeah. In every situation, every little obstacle, every little yeah. challenge, you're gonna go this way, you're gonna go that. Yeah. And I feel like the sense that we both made, the sense that you're making currently, yeah. is shaping you and molding you to who you yeah. and who you are. And I'm like, and I'm like, the, night I, the night I almost lost my life, like seeing how God was talking to me and I wasn't listening, that night I told myself, whenever I hear you speak to me again, I'm going to listen. Do you hear me? I'm going to listen because I never want to go through this again. I never want to go to anything close like this. And so I was, I was wild. Right. And the streets don't run up. Like you go one or two ways when you live in the streets. You go to jail. Are you gonna sleep in your cell for the rest of your life? Or you're gonna sleep in your brain for the rest of your life. I'm not going, I'm not going back to jail and I'm not going to die before my children are old and I get to see them have children and I get to give her my grandchildren life. So like now I'm cautious about the choices that I make. Right. Those choices, like you know, that they lead to our decisions that we make. So I don't put myself in messed up situations anymore. Yeah, I'm like that I set myself up for success, like, you know, I'm setting my children up for success because if I would have lost my life that night, if the same people that raised me had to raise my children, the cycle of poverty would have continued. Right. The cycle of trauma would have continued. Just that generational Perfect. downfall, mm -hmm. yes, would have continued. So I said, you know what, it's time. Get up, go, like, get yourself together. Yeah. And that's literally about the choice that I made. 2019 was a year of God building me up. Like he gave me a nice job. And even though I lost that job, he gave me that better. I want to start a business. My name is Hillary. So I'm sitting there rolling this school. I hear LMA say, head over here. And literally a light bulb came on my head. I left the school, went downtown, and like got a BBA for head of real estate. That's me. Like God that's gave that to me. Yeah. Like, and how clever was that? Like, yeah. People yeah. call me Hill. That's that's my nickname. Yeah. So I thought that was, and that wasn't even the name of my business. Honestly, mm -hmm. I had started brain and banking coming up with a business called Jamaican Me Free. That was like something I started in 2017. And then here in 2019, I went a whole other direction because God took me a whole other direction. Like it wasn't my plan, it was his plan. Like, yeah. That would be a big 
listen to it. Like, I'm telling you, life was like rough for me. To the girls in school, like nitpicking with me, like I used to feel like I had to prove myself. I had to tell myself, you don't have anything to prove to nobody. People see you, they intimidate by you, but they want to see how far they can push on what is to see who you really are. And I mean, you don't have to prove to nobody. They see you, they they know the energy that I have. Literally, when I walk in the room, I shift the energy in the room. And I don't have to say anything. And it's not even like a bad thing, it's just. My energy is strong. Yeah. It speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And I have to realize that like, you don't have to you have to prove yourself to them. They're intimidated on you. They see something mm -hmm. in you that you know you're not seeing yourself. They don't even know what you've been through. Right. But they see you happy. Like I tell you all the time, when you see me laughing and you see me happy, that's different. I can't help it that I ate rainbow and cupcakes for breakfast. Okay. Like, I have a reason to be happy, like I'm alive. Like yeah. if, if people seen what I seen, mm -hmm. nobody will ever know what I went through and like my friend got killed. Ain't nobody gonna know how I performed CPR on a man from where I lived to some of the hospital and he still didn't make it. If that man could have said anything to me, he would have said help me. I was covering blood on top of my shoulders that my shoes had blood. I love the police station basically making some boxes at the same time. They took my clothes from me like for weeks, for months, like I literally used to scream. I used to wake up, I couldn't sleep for a long time. I used to see this man in my dreams. I was a loose walking my house. Do you feel like you have PTSD from that? Um, yeah, like, if I'm gonna be real myself, yeah, like, yeah. Because now, like, talking about it now, like, I'm not getting anxiety in my chest, but like, a week ago, I was like, literally thinking about this, anxiety, bad, like, to the point where I'm quiet, I'm gonna fall out of my anxiety, so bad. Yeah, I, sometimes I still do like, I hear gunshots and get scared. Mm -hmm. Like, I hear gunshots, I tell my children, stay away from the windows. Like, yes. I think I took a really bad for PTSD, especially now that I'm having a baby. Yeah. I feel like if something was to happen, like, how do I handle it? Like, I can take my kid in, like, like me, I can take myself real bad, real quick. But now that I'm having a baby, it just makes it even more, like, I'm just super scared all the time. Like, I don't know if it was a part of that I went through, but it's, like, even more hyped. If I hear some of my dog barking too much, first thing I'm thinking about, like, you know, they're scared when they put the baby somewhere, they hide the baby in the bushes or something. And then like, shh, I'm gonna be right back. That be me. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna put it in the closet and I'm gonna run through the house and see what's going on. Like, it's just so much that comes with having kids yeah. and going through, you know, our own trials and tribulations. Yeah. Especially yeah. with something like that that's very traumatic. Yeah. Like, that's something you might, you know, like, you've been through with your faith, but for other people that are going through something, that might be something for like therapy. Like, even yeah. coming to talk to me about it, because they're yeah. for you, and I'm happy yeah. about it. But that's something where it's like our PTSD can take over, but out of my mouth. Whatever it is that you put in my spirit, let it manifest out of my mouth. Let me hear you. A lot of times when I be praying, like, I be listening to myself, like, yes. like I be shocking myself, yes. like, um, that piece that I wrote, and God, I'm excited, and I pray for you because of me. Yes. That, those are my words. God dropped it in my spirit, and as he dropped it in my spirit, I'm like, like I'm, I'm going so fast trying to put it all down yeah. before I lose any of it. And like, even now, I go back and I read it to myself, like, mm, yo, what? you gave this to me? Like, yeah. like, you gave this to me? Like, I needed that, like. And I'm going to make sure we put her podcast in here because there's a lot of things in there where it's different. It's different. Uh, what, 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 what did you say, the Lord? Are prayers? Um, or they're just like testimonies or like words of encouragement. Just, it's words of encouragement. It's like, so many it's so many things. I yeah. feel like if whatever you would need or whatever you feel lost, I, I want you to go listen to the podcast because there was one that I listened to it was only a few minutes long, but not too long. Just click on you one, if you're oh. driving somewhere, you cook it or you watch the game, oh, just take that. Just listen to that. And it's kinda of like a cleansing of the palate. Yeah. It's very cleansing and it's very calm. So if you need something to kind of okay. listen to, I'm definitely going to the podcast so y'all can take a listen on that. Hey, I make work. I make it. You been doing hard work. 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 Hard so there was a, a situation with Gavin that I'm gonna let her talk about that because you know this is her son and she's more of an expert on this. And if you want to share some uh, tips and advice on how to uh, kind of see the signs or to know, you know, when I need to say something because with me, like my son, he's not verbal at all right now. He barely laughs and gets me. So I get on the internet right now and drive myself crazy. So if you want to go ahead and talk about that, uh, so, that journey you have. Um, in 2017 is when I started noticing it. And like that's when the signs started kicking up because it was a pretty like, you know, he honestly, he was a pretty developed baby at first. And I don't care what anybody says, I do feel like my son getting vaccinated. 
affected him. Like, you know, these heavy metals and things in his body, mm -hmm. and we don't know what's in them. My son got vaccinated on December the 6th of 2016, and not in his leg. It was he's like the medicine hadn't worked his way through his body. Like, two and a half weeks later, it's still there. I didn't think anything of this. 2017 rolls around, like, I noticed that, well, I, honestly, I didn't notice it because like, I was working all the time. Oh. But my son wasn't talking, like, he wasn't saying, like, you know, mama, or just like the right. little words that he was saying at first, mm -hmm. he was no longer saying them. Okay, and so there so, was a change. Yeah, a, like a, a dramatic change. And I was like, yo. So one day, this was back in maybe like August. In the July, beginning of August of 2017, um, my youngest son was a baby. He was in this little bouncer thing playing, and I'm sitting there watching my kids. Well, first my son was sitting in front of the TV, and it was the noises that he was making. It was the movements that he was doing. Like, I was just looking at him, and I just started crying. So then, like, later on that day, like, um, he was on the bouncer with my youngest son, and it was, I don't know, like, you could see it yeah. in his face. I was like, something's not right, like, Something about my son is different. Um, but I used to drop down and I walk down the street, drop my other son off, and I come back and just stand outside the building just to like see if he's going to be Oh, well, that'll be me. Standing <laughs> outside watching. I could hear him screaming. Like, oh, wow. I would be standing, like, I would literally walk to the curb where the bus stop was, and I could hear my son screaming. Oh. And I never would leave him in there. I would just go back in there, and pick him up, yeah, and take him home. And like one day the lady told me, she this lady said, man, she said, baby, something wrong with him. You need to get him tested. Yeah, because they have been dealing with him like screaming at the top of his life. But they they be around with the children. Yeah, okay, so, so she didn't know how to say it to me. And right. like, I'm a pretty dominant person if you ever meet me in person, mm -hmm. like my energy is really strong, so she probably didn't know how to say it to me. Yeah, okay, that's one way to say it, but okay. And she's an older yeah. black lady, so yeah. what she said, I'm looking at her, and I was getting frustrated with her, but yeah. I was like, you know what? Okay, Nancy. She's not lying to me, because I have already seen, seen it okay. myself. Yeah, like, so did you take him to, like, a, like, like a, a, what would you call it, like a, what do you call it? He was like a specialist? Him. So his his pediatrician, after pushing and pushing, oh, gave you a referral. Yeah, took him out it took a year. Mm -hmm. Like they did the referral at the end of twenty seventeen. No, they did the referral in twenty eighteen, but he didn't get seen until twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. So like we're in the process. It took them two years mm -hmm. to diagnose him because children were so backed up. But I didn't need anybody to diagnose my son. I'm a mom. Like it was yeah. like, <laughs> walking on the tippy toes. Playing with the lights, which is like just a little quirk that I see in him. Like, okay, something not right. Something is not right. I pushed for it. Um, they did an ECI referral mm -hmm. where like they just had people coming out and working with him. And then in 2019, the nurse practitioner came in. He had a neurology appointment. This study came in, sat with my son, and just watched the way he played. Like just watched like you know his communication mm -hmm. even with us. And I was like, yeah, he's autistic. Mm -hmm. like, and like from there we just started like you know rolling the ball like trying to get him into speech therapy occupational therapy like right. getting him the help that he needed and like it's honestly been a journey like it's still a journey i had one therapist well, i had he's had a few therapists but he got one therapist that was so good her name was rachel and like when i tell you this woman came into my life and like you know really did wonders with me and my son and like i really appreciate her um, she helped me get this tablet called Nova Chat tablet that helped my son start talking. Like, my son was not vulnerable for five and a half years. My son didn't start talking to us what until 2021. She, yes. like, she was just different. Like, she involved me. She let me yeah. When you love doing something, like, you go above and beyond. And that's what she did. Like, and I just, yes, I really loved her. When she moved to Oregon, like, we cry because like yeah like you can't we going too you can't we don't leave me please, please, please. Please. and i used to tell her that like you know what am i gonna do like what yeah. am i gonna do when you leave but i'm glad that she let me watch her unless i got to like sit in a observer because like i kept up with those same things and he also had a teacher that you know helped to me with him like she was stern so like he needed to like yeah, has come a really long way. Like, he don't beat me up in the morning, but morning because I used to get punched, kicked, scratched, all the way from the time I woke up to the time I dropped him off. My youngest son, face, scratched up. Like, if you look at my son's face, scratched up. That takes a lot of strength as, you know, Man. as a mom to not 
know, do I discipline him or is this something that, you know, we have to kind of I didn't used to discipline this, him. I did not used to discipline him, mm -hmm. but um, I'm on a prayer line and one of the ladies on the prayer line, her son's autistic, but he's older now, he's in his 20s and he's kind of grown out of it. And she really has been like a mentor for me yeah. in that field. Somebody has to call on and let me tell y'all something. Autism does not mean stupid because he's far from stupid. It does not mean do not discipline him because if he goes out here and he robs the bank, the police are going to say like, hey, he's autistic. Let's not take yeah. him to jail. No, they're going to arrest him. If he goes out here and he rapes someone, the police are going to say, oh, he's autistic. He doesn't know any better. No, they're going to take him to jail. So that starts like that discipline, that, that bar, it starts in the house. So it starts with me. I do discipline him. Yeah. You're not going to keep hitting on me because if you hit me, you'll go out there in the real world and you'll hit somebody else and then I'm going to be in jail behind my son. Yeah, and we definitely gonna go to jail. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go to don't jail. Don't want to do so that. Yeah, let's I not go to, to jail, mom. I have to let him know, like, if you get someone, you're gonna get oh, back. Yeah. And that lesson starts right. with me. So yeah, he does get this one, but it took me a while to this one. I'm, uh, my children have their own room, so like, go to your room. Oh, so you separate yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have I to like, like give me my space, like, because I also want to shake my children for. When you have a significant other, like how many times have you like, you know, and not just you, but like talking to in general, like, you know, have you been in a relationship and you're getting into it with your spouse and like right after you right after like, you know, they've upset you, like they still right there, like you don't yes. have no space, like and I'm like, you know, starting that with my children. Now that's toxic and I'm teaching my children, yeah. now, hey, you go set the boundaries. You go set me, like give me some space. Let me calm down, or I'll go sit in my car, or you know, like I might listen to some music, like exercise and help me, yeah. like just little things to like bring me down. I might tell my children, like, you know, hey, just let me get some peace up in here, mm -hmm. be quiet for a second, and like, you know, come back to it. Now, if I'm really irate, like, um, I got a sister, my sister's like in her 40s, I'll call her and I'll be like, hey. I'm on a ledge. I need you to talk me down. Yeah. Because in a minute, I'm going to So your jump. sister will be your support system. Yeah. So instead of that other situation we had, we'll call yeah. our sister. We'll go yeah. exercise. Yeah. That's like, it. When I, I when I calm down, then I go yeah. around. And I tell my children the same thing. If I upset you, exactly. baby, you, you and, and that's good that you teach them that too. Yeah. So when they get older in life, they're not just in somebody's face. Just, yeah. Sometimes we just need to just back up and leave me alone. So we'll exactly. Say, even yourself. Yeah. I need you to say, let me know. Yeah, and exactly, and I want them to know, like, I let my children express themselves. If I'm, if I ask myself, if I'm getting energy, like, yeah, that's cool. I know you're entitled to that. Yeah, they are. Let's just give each other our space, and then let's work for me, and we'll talk about the situation, and let's move forward. Yeah. Like, just going from there. So, like, that's been helping us. Like, I'm open with my children. I'm honest with my children, and like, I'm. Growing up, if you try to express yourself, you're disrespectful. Right. So, like, I don't try to now. It's not what my children say that makes it disrespectful. Sometimes it's how, how they say it. it. So if my son is pushing and he's being I let him know. Yeah, you're, you're being, pushing. Yeah. yeah, I like, like to put a little shopping cart in it. You're yeah. pushing it. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tone it down. Yeah. Because. There's a way to say it, baby. Yeah. We're not going to do that. But I don't, like, you know, make him hold it and let him express it. So mm -hmm. Because, like, that's creating, like, you know, a bond and it's setting boundaries. Right. Like, we're learning. Because this is a life is a learning experience. There's no manual to be in a right. home. I, I think with that older generation, like with our parents, like for us to say something back was wrong and sad. Like if I say something like, well, I don't want to do this today, like, well, you ain't got no choice. Like, I don't want to have a choice. Like, if you like, my problem was I was disrespectful because I knew right from wrong, and I would tell them like you're wrong. Yes. That's wrong, and it's like, oh you disrespectful. Was I disrespectful? Or was I telling the truth? Yeah. Was I, I disrespectful? Be able to have yeah. Mm -hmm. Was I disrespectful? Or was I standing up for myself? Mm -hmm. So check on your friends that have little boys. We're not okay. We're not okay. okay. We're yeah, not okay. okay. We're not. The mama helicopter mom. Oh yeah, right? helicopter mom. With Gavin, not with Case, but then I had to realize, like, you know, if I die today, Case would be so weak, mm -hmm. and Gavin would be mm -hmm. lost in the sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm his mom. And sometimes I get tired of doing stuff for him. Yep. Imagine me not being here and somebody else having to do the little yes. things yep. that I do for him. I was like, no, let me just give you quick now. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm back, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our interview with Miss Hillary. I'm so happy that she came. We're definitely going to have her back. Um, I'm definitely going to have her back to do more talking about our businesses because I feel like, you know, there needs to be a platform where we can, as moms, express ourselves, especially when we have a business. Because a lot of people like small businesses, and it's not small at all. So I want to make sure that she gets 
to express uh, her her feelings with that and how she's juggling that as a mom. So to wrap it up, I'm just going to ask her a question. Um, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, in the next five years, I see myself honestly wrapping up being done with school. I mean, I still got a long ways to go, so like but definitely trying to push through that. Um, I want to, I love doing hair. I'm not going to even sit up here and say that I don't. Like, I do want to shop. I want to be able to put people that I trust in the shop, mm -hmm. but I also want to travel. Like, you know, I want to get a little bit of hairstylist book. So I set a goal for myself in 2019 that said that by 2021, I'm going to be a celebrity hairstylist. Mm -hmm. I have had the opportunity to work with four people who play the NFL. Mm -hmm. So I've already, like, yeah, you checked that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I want to keep that going. I want to work with little baby. Like, you know, I want to get up yes. there and, Next to people like that, like I love him, so like I want to. <laughs> Not like, to love him. I do love him. He was born the day after me. I'm a day older than that young man. You know when he told me he's 29, I'm a day older than him. Mm -hmm. He let me know that, like you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with me. I can get to where he's at. He thinks like me. Like yeah. we operate the same. So yeah. trying to get up there. Um, I don't just have hair over here. Like I'm not just into the hair business. Like I have to make me pretty. So like that's like the the beauty part of it. So like I do have like a body scrub. So like I'm gonna bring you some of those as well. Yeah, so you can try them out. So like I have juggled with a face mask, but I need to just say, you know what? I need to put that out there and push it under to make me free. I need to get back to doing my yes. lashes. Like I have all of this stuff and I have like it's in my hands. Like these these are blessed hands. Yes. So here's my sewing machine and I'm gonna really push yeah. like yeah, hell the have all here to get yeah. to get a lot of stuff uh, yeah. to get a lot of stuff established written out. And I like to write stuff out now. I'm, yeah. I'm writing Definitely. everything down. You know when we talk about our daily affirmations? Yeah. I didn't put it on my little notepad, but I'm going to yeah. try writing stuff. It's on my mirrors. The only mirror that, that is not written on in my house is the mirror that's in my living room that looks like that. Affirmations, like those are for my children as well. Like, you know, yeah. affirmations for my children. Where do I see my children in the next five years? Like, right now I'm in the process of raising God fearing, well mannered, educated, respectful, respected, respectable, loving, leading, kind, gentle men. Like, you know, Amen. building them up. In five years, I will have a, wow, in five years, I will have a 14 year old and an 11 year old. Like, I see us somewhere, me teaching them the game. I don't even mean, like, you know, when I say business, I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. the business side of it. Like, I don't just do hair. I don't just, like, make body skills. Like, you know, Anita Authentic, that's me. I'm Anita and I'm Authentic. Like, mm -hmm. I might turn that into a clothing routine. Mm -hmm. I might change my podcast name. Like, I'm a marketer. Right now, I, I do marketing for yes. a photography yes. company. Mm -hmm. So, like, I might get into that. I don't have to make websites. Mm -hmm. Like, there isn't anything that I can't do. So, I'm... Head over heels is the business. Right. So like how we're gonna have it's the brand. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to take one thing at a time, like and just start pushing it. Right. So and, and you're doing it. You're doing an amazing job. I wanna yeah. let you know that. You're doing an amazing job for yourself and for your boys. And all this is just the foundation for you yeah. to, you know, grow and expand. And you're gonna look back on this and I'll make sure that we have this time stamp and everything. I really because listen. I wanna look back on this. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Do you know why? Like, you know, even though we could have rescheduled, you know why I showed up today? Because the hardest part is showing up. Yep. Once you show up, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. God says, go. Yeah. Go. I'm so glad y'all came. Yeah, you'll take one step, I'll take three more for you in front of you, lead the way. Mm -hmm. I genuinely feel like every year is getting better and better. So, like, in five years, honestly, like, I mean, listen, well, yeah. It is what I'm chasing. It, wealth isn't even what I'm chasing. Financial freedom, yes. financial stability yes. is what I'm chasing. Mm -hmm. But the type of money that I'm going to acquire along the journey, mm -hmm. it, it's it's going to bring notoriety with it. The people yeah. are going to know who I am. So in five years, a lot can happen. So like I just told myself, scared money don't make no money. The only thing to come to a sleeper is a dream. So I need to be moving my feet and getting to it. And in five years, like I need to be booming. Right. I want to be a motivational speaker. I need to be sitting with Eric Thomas. Like, you know, yeah. we need to be talking and pushing to the people. I need to be telling Eric how I used to sit in my house and listen to his, like, you know, podcast. I need to right. be telling Eric, like, me and ET need to be laughing about, like, hey, how I used to join them free seminars on Facebook okay. and get built up from there. Now I'm giving it back to the people. In five years, like, you know, I need to be running, like, you know, classes, like, pouring back into yeah, people. Yeah, definitely like, do some courses. Yeah, when my salon is open, mm -hmm. I need shampoo tips. I got two. You do? I got two. My son be in the store advertising with me. Okay. Be in the store advertising me to put myself out there like this. 
this year was like so big for me and like I'm really shocked and I'm really proud of myself for even just sitting here and like yeah. you know talking to you, I have good energy because sitting at home, I just be sitting there by myself and the camera just be making me like yeah. uh, I'm nervous. Yeah, I can't stop do it the recording. Today. Literally, yeah. like stop the recording. And then it never gets done. Mm -hmm. But God said, Oh, it's time for us to pray. Ooh. That's what my alarm says. At 7 o'clock, my alarm goes off and it tells me Okay, y'all, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. It is 7. Like, her phone just went off, baby. It is 7 o'clock. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And we're going to go ahead and pray. And I'm going to keep this included in there. If you don't want to listen to the prayer, you can go ahead and leave now. Yeah, because here. Pray. Come on, boys. Let's go ahead and wrap this song up. Lord, 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 Amen. God bless. Heavenly Father, I would just come to you today to first and foremost to thank you for the life that is born through each of us and all of our loved ones, God. We thank you for allowing this to happen today. We thank you for allowing us to make it through the adversity because the adversity is there, but the adversity has made us stronger. And we're just thanking you for allowing this to happen. God, we're asking that you just keep us covered, keep our families covered, and keep all of our endeavors, our future endeavors covered. God, we ask that you just bless our coming in and our going out. And God, we just ask that you just continue to move in our life, continue to remove the veil from our eyes so we can see your plan in our lives and continue to remove the veil from our ears so that we can hear you more clearly, God. We just ask that if we're ever going in the wrong direction, that you turn us around and that you turn us in the right direction, God, and that you just continue to lead us and that you just continue to remove those from our lives that need us.